right here on Big Breakfast. Today FM, today is hit music. Hey, I'm Pauline. And I'm Alan. Tune in to The Breakfast Show on Today FM with Pauline and I every weekday morning. From 6am to 9am. Right here on Today FM, today is hit music. Today FM, today is hit music. This bulletin, Fiji National University Council ends Vice-Chancellor Dr. Ganesh Chan's contract. Australian National Front's court for alleged importation of heroin. And relations with Indonesia to help Fiji tap into Asia-Pacific markets. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. The Fiji National University Council has ended the contract of the university's vice-chancellor, Dr. Ganesh Chand. Professor Ian Rouse, in Dean of the College of Medicine, Nursing and Health Sciences, has been appointed acting vice-chancellor. Akusita Thale reports the change in leadership resulted from a redirection and consolidation of the university's strategic focus. We wanted to give a new strategic focus to the university and uh, there were some differences in terms of uh, between uh, Mr. Dr. Chan and uh, myself, the chair of the council. So we discussed it and uh, he decided that maybe this is the best time for him to uh, step, step down. Differences between the Fiji National University Council and the university's vice chancellor, Dr. Ganesh Chand, has ended the leadership role despite having three more years left in his contract. But our focus is next year is to look at the existing facilities, existing campuses and build on it. So that's the direction we want to focus next year is to ensure that what we are offering is top quality. And quality is decided by staffing, the, the overall basic infrastructure. Dr. Reddy says the council was ready for change. It was slightly different from the work of Dr. Ganesh Chand. Slightly diverged, slightly there was a divergence, so, and uh, we thought that look, I think it's important that uh, instead of having any differences, I think this is the best time that we uh, kind of refocus on this. And that was the uh, understanding mutually we came to it again. The Education Minister says Dr. Chan's removal is not in any way related to the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption's investigation into the university's affairs. If I can investigation process is very confidential. Uh, I did write to them as chair of council asking them and they did write to saying that look uh, it's improper for them to say anything while the investigation go uh, underway. So I did I didn't pressure out. Professor Ian Rouse is expected to appoint an acting dean for medical, nursing and health services later this week while the council is looking into the right time to appoint a new vice chancellor. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The Lautoka Magistrates Court this afternoon refused bail for Australian Ethan Kai, who is charged with unlawful importation of illicit drugs. In denying bail, the judge said it's a high-profile case and it has to be noted that 33-year-old Kai is a foreign national. Ritika Pratap has more. The magistrate says if Kai was granted bail, there is a high chance he would abscond. Kai's lawyer told the court his client has been in custody since December 22nd and should have been produced in court earlier, adding that his client was not found in possession of any illicit drugs. The matter has been transferred to the Lotoka High Court. Kai is also charged with failure to declare foreign currency. He was stopped at Nandi International Airport on Sunday while allegedly trying to flee the country and appeared in court on Monday. After being bailed, he was again arrested and taken in and questioned for his alleged involvement in the discovery of the heroin. Another name in the case is local businessman Mohammed Sahid Khan, also charged and remanded by the court in the same $30 million heroin bust. Kai and Khan are both expected to appear in the Lotoka High Court on January 14th next year. The drugs shipped from Thailand were confiscated at the Lotoka Wharf two weeks ago after 80 packets of powder were found hidden in the tires of a quad bike. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. 
Relations between Fiji and Indonesia have progressed well since we opened a diplomatic mission in Jakarta in 2011. Akusita Tale reports this is also a door of opportunity to expand Fiji's trade into East Asian markets. Fiji's ambassador to Indonesia, Ratu Seremaya Tuida Vilati, says Fiji is well poised to tap into key areas in trade, investment and tourism in Southeast Asia's largest economy. Ratutui says the embassy hopes to work closely with various ministries in Fiji. We are there to facilitate and we are there to uh, create the, uh, the working environment. For instance, in uh, Jakarta, we've established very good networks with uh, the Investment Promotion Agency of uh, Jakarta, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Ministry of Trade uh, themselves. They're very willing to, to help us entertain uh, missions to come over and also uh, to uh, encourage uh, private sector uh, and business-to-business -business relationship, which is now the, the second um, goal um, from 2014 to 2017 that the mission um, is now embarking on now that we've encouraged from 2011 to 2014 government-to-government -government relations through the many MOUs that we've signed. So we're well poised to do that. The ambassador adds Indonesia is known for affordable and quality goods that buyers in Fiji can benefit from. There is foreign exchange savings when you look at the cost and uh, I think it is good for business if we can encourage that. But we're looking forward in 2014 to 2017 to be able to lift uh, both that. Connectivity is very important when you talk about tourism. So we're hoping that uh, Tourism Fiji, the Civil Aviation Ministry will also uh, provide the uh, the connectivity that would be required so it enhances people to people links and business to business uh, links as well. The 2014 Fiji Year 13 certificate examination results has been released to district education officers around the country. School principals have been advised to collect their school's results from the district education officers from 10 a.m. tomorrow. The Education Ministry says that a total of 7,246 candidates sat for the examination in 2014. Students have also been advised to take proper identification to the examinations office in Suva to collect their results from 9 a.m. tomorrow. It's now open for students to, you know, for recheck when we come. Uh, and that should be lodged at the exams unit no later than 30th of January 2020. 15. The recount fee is $5 per subject and late recount applications will not be accepted. Results will also be available through the government's ITC toll-free number 132777 and website www.examresults.gov.fj from 9 a.m. this Wednesday. Official individual result notices will be available for collection from 9 a.m. on Wednesday, 7th January 2015 from the examinations office. Coming up after the break, retailers happy with Christmas sale. Welcome back. This is FBC News. A 10-member delegation from Hong Kong with business interests in property development and tourism is in the country. They met with Fiji's Foreign Minister Ratuinoke Kumbombola today and updated him of their possible investment plans in Fiji. Kumbombola says there could be a lot more investment given there is already a direct Nandi and Hong Kong flight. The ministry will be working with the Fiji Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong to ensure much-needed investment is pumped into Fiji. Christmas sales were up this year. The increase in duty on luxury items in the 2015 national budget has had some impact on businesses. Ellen Stalls has more. Returning from meeting with retailers in the Western Division, Himat Lodia says this year's Christmas sales were good. Uh, this year we also found that, that the uh, gift shops and other, uh, other stores had, have done extremely well. Which is, which is also um, something we can say it's positive. 
mm. for for the retailers. But the year did not go without its fair share of challenges, namely announcements made in the 2015 budget. The increased duty on luxury goods greatly affected some businesses. For instance, now we have uh, jewelry, watches, cosmetics, perfumes, all these type of luxury goods suddenly attract 32% uh, plus a 15% VAT. So all these things keep make a, a, the increase the, in immediate cost to the retailer. Basically, when you start selling a product, you have to put up 52%, you have to fork out to the government first, uh, and, and, and then you start doing business. But despite this, shop owners say their Christmas sales were up. Um, yes, we had, uh, compared to last year, it was really great. Since uh, our profit was a lot, we had uh, gained a lot of profit from the sales. And uh, many people came in for their new look of dresses, like for their party wear, for their kids' party wear dresses. We had a lot of customers who came in. We did very good sale in Christmas. And uh, like a wedding, we, we have a really busy in the wedding side, like men's sharwani and ladies' ghagra choli and saris, uh, also salwar kameez. We did the best sale this time. This Christmas was very good. 2015 will bring more challenges. However, Laudia says right now the word on the street is that sales are up and business is good. Ellen Stalls. FBC News. Unfavorable weather conditions have forced police to call off the search for two men in a small craft missing in Lao waters since Christmas morning. The pair left Vivia Island for Nayao on Christmas morning in a 29-foot fiberglass outboard but failed to reach their destination. Spokesperson Ananai Soro says once the weather improves, the police will resume their search but as of now, no trace has been found. Uh, because uh, until we the search is called off, then we'll be able to uh, make another uh, statement of that. But uh, we really don't want to be saying that. Because eh? they never know. They could be somewhere safe, uh, taking shelter. But uh, that has to be confirmed and we allow the search to be, uh, be conducted there. Eh? Mariners are requested to keep a lookout for the boat and its occupants. And if they spot anything, to immediately get in touch with the police. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation will welcome in the new year with a bang at its New Year's Eve party in Suva. The FBC will host the New Year's Bash at My Suva Park in Asese and has invited everyone. The venue was chosen as it's large, comfortable and has the basic amenities to suit everyone's needs. It's a place where a lot of people in, uh, in, in, in Fiji know about and those who don't know and coming down for holidays in Suva, it's a good way of promotion, uh, promoting my Suva Park. It is uh, a place in Suva that all Suva residents are very proud of. And also, uh, if there's a big crowd, uh, since we're blocking off the road, the, the crowd spillover can be accommodated in the park. And it gives us an opportunity and the space and, and, and facilities to use in the park as well. There's toilets there, there's a police post. The FBC New Year's Bash is an alcohol-free event. Sandeep Patel, the managing director of CJ Patel Group and one of Fiji's leading business tycoons, has died at the age of 52 after an apparent heart attack in his home early yesterday. As the managing director of the CJ Patel Group, under his hand, the company expanded from Fiji to cover the region, including Australia and New Zealand. As a business executive, he was low-key and avoided publicity, despite being headed sorry, despite heading one of the most prosperous companies in the country. Sandeep Patel is survived by his wife and three children. Turning to world news, Indonesian authorities now believe missing Air Asia Flight 8501 crashed into the sea. The search has been ongoing for the plane and its 162 passengers. We turn to sports now. Here is Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. Coming up, Ray Krishna scores winning goal for Wellington Phoenix, and FBC Sports speaks to a Wallaby winger about how he wants to change the way people think when they hear his family name. Details after the break.
Gold FM only the classic hits, beautiful song from the group Firehouse and When I Look Into Your Eyes. Before that, you heard from Smokey Robinson with One Hot Beat. We'll take a short break and join us in the next hour for more music from Seal. Bulabalak, I'm DJ Tora. Join me every weekdays, 7 until midnight, on the premium classics. Right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. First up in FBC Sports, Fijian Roy Krishna scored the winner for Wellington Phoenix to beat the Western Sydney Wanderers 1-0 in A-League competition last night in New Zealand. Krishna scored. The injury was later confirmed and he will miss the next two matches to recover. The 2015 National Football League is scheduled to kick off next weekend. The Fiji Football Association does not want any delays this time around and all necessary preparations are being made to ensure the league starts next weekend. We have our uh, National League which we are planning to kick off on 10th of uh, January. We are having talks with our sponsors and um, uh, things are being pre prepared for a kickoff on uh, 10th or 11th of uh, January. This announcement will come out shortly from the league board, but uh, we have had uh, very good uh, cordial discussions with our sponsors and we are now uh, aiming towards the kickoff on, uh, on 10th or 11th of January. In English Premier League football, Chelsea missed the chance to tighten their grip on the title race as they were, they were held to a one all draw by Southampton. However, the draw keeps Chelsea in first place on 46 points, only three ahead of Manchester City. Meanwhile, Manchester United manager Louis van Gaal says his team struggled for life in the second half of their nil-all draw against Tottenham. Victory would have enabled third place. And finally, in sports, not too long ago, the Spate name was made known the world over for not the best of reasons. More recently, the name Spate has been on your television sets at 6 p.m. every weekday. Delivering FBC news by way of our very own Jackie Spade. Now her superstar cousin and Wallaby winger wants to make the family name known the world over again, but this time associated with the sport he loves most. Josephine Navula caught up with Henry Spade in Nandi and files this report. After reports from overseas... It doesn't affect me at all and I guess a name is a, is a name and if you go away from it then it's just... Uh, uh, turning your back on your family and where you come from, so uh, that's that will be a scene in itself. So this generation and the next, uh, the ultimate aim is just when they hear the name Spade, they can relate it to a, a rugby player and, and nothing other, other than that, nothing political or, or any other agenda. Meanwhile, the 26-year-old major factor that we saw from the spring tour is how the how improved the, the scrum has has been in their lineouts and. Uh, and that's, that's always been sort of the Achilles heel for the, Fiji, the Flying Fijians in the past, so, so, so they say. With the Wallabies pulled alongside the Flying Fijians in the 2015 Rugby World Cup, Spade is looking forward to donning the green and gold jersey and running riot against his home nation. Josephine Navula, FBC Sports. Well, Henry, I'm sure you're watching and it is my humble plea on behalf of everyone in Fiji that you do not run right against the flying Fijians at next year's World Cup. I'm sure you can save your A-game for your other pool matches. That was your sports for tonight. Business is up next with the one and only Jackie Spade. <laughs> Fiji Television Limited's existing television broadcast license has been extended a further six months from tomorrow. In a letter to Fiji TV dated 24th December 2013, Minister for Communications Ayaside Kayum stated that the extension will be until further notice of any additional terms and conditions including spectrum allocation that may be prescribed. It says Fiji Television Limited will continue to broadcast under the terms and conditions of its existing license. Showers were experienced over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands today. Fine weather prevailed elsewhere. 
Lombasa recorded the highest on the temperature chart today, recording 33 degrees. The western centres Nandi, Lautoka and Ba all recorded 32 degrees. Savu Savu had 30 degrees and Suva was the coolest today with 28 degrees. Tomorrow showers should be expected across all centres. Further outlook, some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, afternoon or evening showers and thunderstorms elsewhere. Recapping our top stories, Fiji National University Council ends Vice-Chancellor Dr Ganesh Chan's contract, Australian National Front's court for alleged importation of heroin and relations with Indonesia to help Fiji tap into Asia-Pacific markets. To our poll segment and the results from last week's question, 79% said no and 21% of the vote said yes. This week we're asking, do New Year's resolutions work? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's news for tonight. Join the team and I again tomorrow at the same time. Till then, good evening. You can say a Mirchi FM for Raftar me. May have him suffer Sati Krishnil, Sami Hochika, who or Pijime Videsh me of Jahaki, but we have a Sundre, Krishnil Kapiar up Tamam Dosata Koji. Hello, guys, my who DJ Krishnil, up a Mesun Sakte, Mirchi FM, Raftar me, Monday to Friday, Shamteen Seleka Ratsata Kamako Rockerange. Mirchi FM, it's hot.